forgot to put in my bibliography and I had already submitted and I had just about five to ten minutes left. Hi everyone, welcome back to Diary of Maria B, your guide to all things PhD, lifestyle and productivity. I am Courtney and today I'm going to be talking to you and telling you about the top five apps that I think are really important for PhD students and anybody who's doing your research. So I'm a third year PhD student and if it's one thing I've had my fair share of doing is going through the different applications that would help improve my productivity as well as managing my PhD. These are the five apps right now that I'm loving the most as well as the ones that I use most frequently throughout my PhD journey and research and even from my masters coming up. The first one I'm going to talk about is a note taking app. This is really critical because as you do your literature review, as you read your papers, it's really important to just have an idea of what you've been reading and keep notes of that because when you're gonna write up you're going to need to have this information somewhere that's concise and you can easily search for it. Using a notebook is fine but after you start reading over hundreds of papers really putting that all that together in a big project it gets difficult. So the two programs that I've used are called OneNote and Evernote. In previous videos I focused on OneNote because that's what I started out with but more recently I've been loving Evernote so I've switched to Evernote and the reason for that is Evernote the way in which it's laid out is a lot better for me. With OneNote and Evernote you can have multiple notebooks for different subjects, different topics, different areas that you're working on. So for me I have one for my PhD work work that I'm doing on the side as well as now the internship as well as the YouTube channel, different ideas that I want to put together and maybe the scripts. The reasons I've switched from OneNote to Evernote are one, for OneNote I was struggling with exporting the notes that I took so sometimes I wanted to take that the notes from that notebook and from that page to a Word document and with OneNote, um, aligning the dimensions are a bit tricky as it, it just allows the work to flow. But in terms of transferability, that was where my biggest problem was. With Evernote, I'm able to export the page, which really helps in terms of sharing and getting feedback from raw ideas with my supervisor. Also, I'm able to see all the notes just line up right there, as well as the most recent ones I've been working on, because sometimes it can be a challenge to remember what exactly you've been working on. And with Evernote, I'm able to do that. The second app I'm gonna talk about is something really critical to any researcher, which is a referencing software. Please, in 2020 and beyond, do not get caught having to manually do your references. I know I have a lot of friends who are just like, nope, I'm not trusting it. I have to do my Escola by myself. But for me, as a Harvard a referencing person, and I know a lot of other people who use it in different referencing types, having a referencing software is absolutely key. What I use is Zotero. So my second app is Zotero. I've been using Zotero for over four and a half years since my first master's program and it has definitely been a lifesaver for many things which I'm gonna tell you about. So Zotero, so it allows you to take the metadata for the citations, the papers that you've read and it has a really cool feature which is a plugin in your browser so I have one in my Chrome and that allows me to download the metadata right away into the different folders that I have for Zotero for different research topics and then it also has this cool feature that once you have access to the document it also saves the PDF at the same time. Now you have to be a bit careful with this because what I found is that it can become a bit overrun because sometimes you just search for papers and before reading them you just click click and it saves them. It can get a bit out of hand so just bear that in mind. But with Zotero there's so many good things. One, when you're writing you can easily insert your citations and references and one thing that saved my life is it automatically generates your bibliography. Now, at the end of my second master's, granted, I was submitting quite late. I forgot to put in my bibliography and I had already submitted and I had just about five to ten minutes left. And all I had to do was go back and click generate bibliography and it was in and I was able to submit on time. So please, that is really going to help you if you are writing a paper and writing a journal article or anything that requires you to have your references. Also, another perk for Zotero is it has this cool add-in feature called Zotfile. Now, Zotfile, when introduced to me, was a game changer. Zotfile allows you to extract the annotations from your PDFs and papers that you've read. If you ever tried to copy and paste words from your PDF document, you know it goes all kinds of haywire. But with Zotfile, anything that you highlight 
um, and make notes on it would extract that information for you and put it in a separate folder in that metadata component of your paper and you can easily copy and paste that to your Word document, to your notes, etc. But other referencing softwares, I know people use Mendeley, I've used it a little bit and there, there are a few others, but just find the one that works best for you. So the third app is any software that can help you create diagrams and figures for your work. Now, I personally use Microsoft PowerPoint. It has not failed me yet, but there are many other advanced programs that you can use. With PowerPoint, I can create different documents, shapes, and then export them as JPEG, PNG, etc. And I have used this for creating different posters, diagrams within my thesis itself. As a PhD student and a researcher, it's going to be really important to display your work in concise diagrams for posters, for conferences, etc. So you're going to really need to have just any software that can help you create high quality images that don't just go blurry, pixelated when you zoom in. My fourth one is Microsoft Word or any writing software. For me right now it is Microsoft Word. I am planning to try out Scrivener a bit later because for me with Word, the rigidity of it sometimes limits my creativity and my ability to flow in my writing. But Word is really handy because especially as a researcher and PhD student, you're gonna have to keep getting feedback and comments on your work. And I think it's really a standard program that a lot of people use, but with Word, you can track changes and you can easily put in your comments, reply to people's comments, resolve their comments, which is really good to just deal with your feedback and process your feedback as you go. But also it has cool plugins, which allows you to use referencing software such as Zotero or Mendeley, etc. You can always export to PDF or export as a blog style or html and that i think is really handy now my fifth and final app is something that i found just a couple of months ago and have been using it has totally changed my life changed a phd game as a phd student you are managing your own project it's going to be three years four years even your master's program that's a couple months or a year or some to get work done you need to plan it's really important that you manage and have knowledge about your deadlines that are coming up the different conferences meetings you have to go to things that you need to respond to and just having a calendar or a to-do list would really help i've used in the past wonderlist and also the apple calendar but the app that has definitely changed my life in terms of planning is notion i've been using this for about three months or so and i'm gonna do a bit more in-depth video on this because notion has changed my life and my phd for the better I'm not gonna lie to you, it's just the way in which the things are laid out, it works the way my brain works and it allows me to just put free ideas, free thoughts into papers and pages and just the way I'm able to visualize my tasks as well as different things I need to do. It also doubles as a lot of the other programs that I have mentioned. Yes, it acts as a planner. You're able to put the calendar in there. You can view it as a calendar. You can view it as a table. You can view it as what's complete, what's not complete, as a to-do list, etc. But you can also do free writing. So it acts as a note-taking app, able to keep track of what you need to read, what you haven't read. Just all around a great program. And I definitely, definitely recommend Notion for any PhD or researcher. It has a lot going on. So those were my five apps that I think are really critical and that you should really try to use in your PhD and in research because they have helped me so much in the past years, four years or so as a postgraduate student and as a PhD student. Again, these are just my preferences. You can always play around with what works best for you based on the type of computer you have, the type of work that you're doing, LaTeX, pages, all those things are gonna vary and you have to know what works for you. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions, please drop them down below. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content.